Join us in this detailed tutorial from our expert trainer who walks you through each step. Let's get started. When working with otherwise busy data sets in Excel, one very effective way to convey your message visually is through charts and graphs. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how we can create visuals from our data. Just like with a lot of things in Excel, we have to select it to affect it. So what we want to do is create a chart around all this content except for our totals. So I'm going to do is highlight everything A4 all the way to F9, and again, everything but the totals, and I'm going to make a chart out of this. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to go over here to the Insert tab, and you will notice here I have a group called Charts. Now, the first thing we're going to cover here is this recommended charts, because Excel is very good about giving you some recommendations. And this could be good for anybody at any level, whether you're brand new to Excel or even people who are experienced to give you some nice ideas. So when I click on that, you're going to see here, these are my recommended charts, and they're giving me some nice, simple column charts, some line charts, some stack column charts, some bar charts, etc., and so much more. And a lot of these I've heard of, but many of these might give me some new ideas. So that's really nice to really just kind of start with the recommendations initially. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And now we're going to take a look at some of the other options we have here. Now there are quite a few different chart types to explore. You can see as I hover my mouse over it, you can see here is insert column, insert line charts, pie charts, and you can see here is also like hierarchy charts and so, so, so much more. It's definitely worth exploring these. But a lot of it's going to depend on your data. So you don't want to just kind of choose these indiscriminately. You want to think about your messaging and what data is going to be most compatible with the charts. So I'm going to go over to here now to my column charts. And when I click on that little drop down, you're going to see here I have 2D column, I have 3D column, 2D bar, etc. And when I hover my mouse over it, they are going to give me a nice little preview of what it's going to look like. So before I can commit, I can then see, hey, is this going to be the chart for me? I'm going to go ahead and just choose this first 2D column, and just like that, I now have a nice looking chart. And I'm going to do is just go ahead and move this around here, and I can resize it very easily. And then later on, we're going to learn how we can move this on to its own sheet altogether. So I really like this for now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to here to the top where we have these two new tabs that have appeared. These are known as contextual tabs, and they have to do with whatever is selected. So I have my chart design tab, and I have my format tab. You can see that there. We're going to be spending most of our time on the chart design tab. So the first thing you're going to notice here is this chart styles group. And these are pretty much like out of the box type of charts where they're going to give you a whole bunch of kind of preset options for you around this particular type of chart. So as I hover my mouse over these, you're going to see how they're really nice giving you some data sets and some grids and maybe some extra visual features like some gradients and some backgrounds, etc. So really nice time saver if you want to do some kind of a little bit more elaborate design without having to do too many steps. But I'm going to keep it at this original one here. Now let's go ahead and focus on the right hand side of our chart design tab. And you're going to see here I have this data group, I have this type group, and I have this location group. Let's start off with this data group. So essentially what we're looking at here with our chart is about storytelling. It's about explaining a narrative. Well, sometimes you want to change the narrative a little bit and you want to do it a little bit more effectively, a little bit more efficiently. So if we look at this chart, we can see here we have month over month data for each individual salesperson. So you can see here we are comparing each individual salesperson within each month. Well, I might want to do things a little bit differently, or I might want to compare each individual salesperson and their individual performance within the salesperson itself. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, it's a very simple way to demonstrate this. I'm going to go ahead and switch the rows and columns, and you can see here it's the same data, but a nice, very effective way of changing my narrative. Some of you may have two charts side by side having the same data, but a little bit of a different story. So you can see here is one salesperson and their performance month over month. And so here's Curtis, their sales performance month over month. I'll go ahead and go back here to my original data set. Let's go over to here now to select data. And this is going to allow me to essentially filter. So I click on select data and notice here now, maybe I don't really want to look at May and April data right now because they're not completely in. So I can go ahead and just uncheck those, click OK. And now you can see I've now controlled what data I want my audience to see. Really nice, very easy. I'm going to go ahead and go back to select data and then very easily bring it back once again. Very nice. Now, changing chart type does exactly what you expect it to do. Let's say, for example, I want to make this 3D, or I want to make it into a bar chart. I can very easily do that. And you'll notice now it's a little bit of a different setup here, where I can see on this little side pane 
all my chart options. So I go over here to bar chart and you can see here, again, all my same options I saw originally, but in a slightly different user interface. You can see that, you can see that, right? As I click on it, you can see that. But I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I really like what I have here. Now, what we're gonna do next is move our chart. I'm gonna move it to its own tab altogether. So I click on move chart. I'm gonna say new sheet and I'll keep the original sheet name as chart one and click okay. And now it's all on its own. I'll go ahead and make that bigger if I want to, really nice, okay, like that. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is start kind of dressing this up a bit because maybe I wanna have some data labels on here. I wanna control maybe where the legend is. Maybe I wanna make things a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to read. Okay, and you can do that in a couple of different places here. Notice, first of all, I have this little plus sign here for chart elements, and then I also have this add chart elements option over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this one right here, but these options do overlap, so you can use one or the other. So I'm gonna click on this little plus sign, and you can see here I have axes and little flyout menu. It's basically asking me, do you wanna show these or not? So my primary vertical, notice when I uncheck that, it goes away. You see that? Or I can make it come back again, just like that, very easy to do. All right, so I'll keep it as is. Axes titles, do I wanna have titles underneath all these to be able to explain what they are? So that's sales over there on the left-hand side, and then months. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes for both of those. And then do I wanna have data labels? And you can see here you have choices. Where do you wanna put them? And for right now, I'm gonna say no. So I'm gonna jump over here to this data table. So I do actually wanna have a data table. So essentially what that's doing is it's embedding the original worksheet on top of my chart itself. And I really do like that. And I also wanna make sure that all my legend right there matches up with everything. So that's pretty neat. But you can also configure it to have no legend options if you want to. And then my legend itself, I'd like to have that maybe on the top. It's a little bit easier to read. So I go over here to my little flyout menu. Where do I want the legend? I can go ahead and say on the top. If you don't want anything at all, you can just go ahead and uncheck that box. And now here that is. Now, for my money, this legend is a little bit hard to read. So very simply, all I need to do is select it, go back to my home tab, and then just bump it up a couple of notches right there. And that's pretty cool, I like that. Okay, now with my chart title itself, notice my chart title is already here. Now I can very, very easily make some changes to that by adding on a name to it, but I can also move it around in different places and I can also disable it. So let's go ahead and give this a name. I'm gonna go ahead and double click and get inside that text box. And I'll just go ahead and just say sales by rep. And now, just like I would be working with any normal text, I can go ahead and bump that up. I can go ahead and bold it. And guess what else? I can also move this around wherever I'd like. So if I go ahead and select that, notice I don't have to be conforming to whatever they're suggesting. I can move it wherever I like. Okay, now if we take a look at this little paintbrush here, here's our chart styles. And this is gonna take us back to that original space that we saw before, in case you wanted to override what we have here, but keeping some of the changes you've already made, including looking at those data tables. But I'm gonna keep it exactly as I have it right now, so I'm pretty happy with this. And then this little icon here is all about the filters. So this is very similar to what we saw before. And if we look at here, if I don't wanna have Barker or Curtis, notice I can then work with these individually and make it so they're only gonna show. But I'm gonna keep it all so everybody's here that's the same and come right back. Very good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a different chart type. I'm gonna go over here to the par chart data. And you're gonna see here, this is a lot different than what we saw before. This type of data is gonna be a lot more compatible for a pie chart. So again, I'm gonna select it to affect it, highlight everything, go back to insert. I'm gonna go ahead and choose pie. And this time I'm gonna choose 3D pie. And now from here, just like how I saw with my regular column chart, I am going to have these two new contextual tabs that appear. And I can very easily now go shopping around for some of these presets, which I really, really like. Let's go ahead and choose that one, for example. And you can see here, something that they did I'd never be able to do looks a lot more engaging and visually interesting than the original one. So I'll go ahead and keep it at that. Now, if we go back over here to our plus sign, just like how we saw with our columns, you're gonna see here, because we're now working with a pie chart, we're gonna get fewer options. But you can see here, I can then work with this and just say, hey, listen, you know, I don't want a chart title. I do want some data labels, but in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to here to more options. Right, but just notice I could add these other things on here. Maybe it's gonna take it away. It's gonna be a little bit less sort of certain with my choices. So that's why we're gonna go over here to more options. I do that, and now this little side pane is gonna open up. 
So what I like to do is actually decide what do I want to add on here? Do I want my category name, my values, adding on percentages? Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so you can see the whole thing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add on a legend. And I want that legend on the bottom. So I'll go ahead, just like how I did with my column chart, I'm going to put that on the bottom. And you can see just like that, everybody's able to match up the colors to the individual salesperson. Now, one last thing I like to show if you are working with 3D pie charts is the ability to make the pie explode. And why would we want to do that? Well, certainly it could be fun to make the pie explode, but we're doing it for communication purposes. Because let's say, for example, I really want to talk about Curtis and I want everybody's eyes to go directly at Curtis. What I could do now is simply select Curtis. You can see that right there. But my entire pie now gets selected. But I want to isolate Curtis. So I select him one more time. And then notice all these little circles right there are only around Curtis. And then very simply, all I need to do is click and drag. And now I can make this pie explode. Very, very cool. Now that I have Curtis selected, I can now go over here to my Format tab. And that's going to allow me to now control all my different options around this, including my fill color, maybe even outline, maybe even some effects around this. But I'm going to go over here to my Shape Fill. And I really want to kind of get everybody's attention directly on Curtis. So what I'm going to do now is just give him a completely different color than the rest to really make him stand out from the rest. And that's going to be this kind of light orange color. And you can see that really makes him stand out. So again, very good storytelling technique. And if we go back to my column chart, you can see here, I go to chart and let's just say I really want to isolate this Kappa Bianco very tall one. I can very easily now select it once and then select it again to isolate him. Go back to format and then once again i'm going to make that stand out just the same now in these two examples we just work with column charts and pie charts i also showed you a few other ones but the good news is is that the steps you use to apply all the different settings and properties are going to overlap between each individual chart so once you learn how to do one or two you'll be able to hit the ground running applying all kinds of different charts and graphs to different data types in addition to using charts and graphs to make your data storytelling a little bit more compelling and communicative, we can use illustrations to then bring a point home. So we look at this particular chart, we can see here we have a low point and then we have a high point here. And I really want to sort of bring that home so people can really see it and also want to communicate maybe through text boxes and shapes. So what I'm going to do now is go over here to my contextual tab of format and you'll notice here is there's this grouping here called insert shape and I click on this little drop down and you can see there's lots and lots of options here. So if I really want to highlight one of those low points there, I can go ahead and take this arrow and then very simply just drag my mouse to then point at it just like that. And now I get a new contextual tab called shape format that's going to allow me to adjust, let's say, for example, the thickness to make it a little bit more visual. I can do that. Let's go ahead and change the color of it. Go back to shape outline. Let's make that red so it really stands out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on a text box. So you can see here is a text box right here. And if you don't see it or if you want to see it from another way, you can do it from that exact same place from format. And then notice that inside the insert shape grouping is also this little text box. So very simply now I can draw out the box for it. And I'm just going to say needs training. And then, of course, I can highlight all my text, make that bigger, and people can really see that there. Very nice. So now we are communicating something. Let's try that in a slightly different way. I'll go back over to here to my chart, click on Format, and this time I'm going to go ahead and put in an arrow. It's going to be a block arrow. I'm going to put some text inside of it. So now here is my block arrow. I'm just going to go ahead and draw that out. And then I'm going to put some text directly inside of my arrow itself. So I'm going to double click inside there and then I'm just going to say nice job. And then of course I can highlight all that and then make it bigger, make it bolder, change the color, do whatever you want to do inside there. Great. Now we can see that there. And of course this text and the graphic moves along with it. I also have the ability to then rotate this if I want to. I also have the ability to manipulate this shape with these little yellow circles if I want to. Make that a little bit kind of a bigger nose, maybe a little more narrow stem. You can see that very nice, very easy to do. And you also have the ability to go to the regular insert tab if you want to and then bring in your illustrations such as icons. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight my chart, go back over to here to insert, 
illustrations, and then you can see here is icons, and then very cool, I can bring in all kinds of different things here to really communicate what I want to communicate through icons. So I'll just go ahead and choose one at random. There's a nice little victory leap. Click on insert. I'll go ahead and move this over here, and you can see now I've dressed up my chart a little bit with a little bit more visual interest. So you can see how effective it can be to add on some more graphics to your charts that already have some nice elements to it, but you want to be communicative either through words or other kind of illustrations or icons. You can see again how effective it can be, but also hopefully how simple it can be. What was your favorite part of this tutorial? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Visit the Simon Says It channel, explore our videos and training sessions, and decide what you want to learn next.